Wicked, wicked. Alright guys, Terrace Bay, Ontario. Drag Fest 2022. We get unloaded. It is Friday. A little bit windy. So we'll be running Friday, Saturday, Sunday here. Should be good. The weather looks good. It's about 19 degrees right now. I think it'll be around there all weekend. We got a little bit of sun coming out now, so hopefully get a little heat in the track. I think we're gonna go walk it here shortly and uh, get ready to go. So we got teched in, got everything pretty much set up. I think what the plan is to uh, bring the launch down from 5,000 where we were leaving at Brainerd at No Prep Kings. So we're gonna get things warmed up, get some fresh plugs in and um, head up for this first lap. Here we go, first pass. Brian's making a lap right ahead of us here. So. shifted on the first gear change and it kind of lugged the motor down a little bit so it started moving in the top end though I think when it hit high gear it really started started making some uh, some steam but bit of driver error there so the car left well so I shifted early on the one two shift and same with the two three the issue with that is with a small motor like this it doesn't make a ton of torque so what happens is I shift early it lugs the motor down a little bit further and it's harder for it to recover and get back up into the power band for now same tune-up same setup just gonna replicate the pass and uh, shift the car in the shift light so it should shift around 7900 or so probably complete the shift around 8000 I think Paul was uh, just setting tire pressure so we got the bottle in and at temp and be ready to go.
we just went uh, 950, clicked it off early. But it, it, it definitely uh, went a little better. And Ryan just went, I don't know if we're showing the slip yet, but. Went 710 with a 5 at 193.98. It's 194 miles an hour. That thing is riding. Alright, so I'd show my slip, but Brian's are more interesting. So, first lap, clicked it off early, picked up two 100s on the second pass. And then same thing here. So, on the 710, 193, nice increase on the, the front half split, and now got a full back half split. So, something to compare it to. So. That thing's rocking really good. Brian's getting ready too. I think we got time for one more tonight, Friday night. And uh, yeah, see what Felt like I hit the shifts, car felt good, left good. We made a bar change too, before we came up, squared up the cow tracks, and uh, yeah, drove straight, felt really good. Definitely was putting some mile an hour down on the top end. That's how you know it was a good one. Let's see what the slip says. So here's the slip for that last lap. Like I said, um, we went 603 to the eighth at 117, 936 with an eight at 146.95, and uh, the short time was 1428960 foot. So pass number two, 146607. Uh, pass number one is 149617. So. Here we are, 142603. So we're heading in the right direction. So that was a personal best on ET, and uh, I believe a personal best on mile an hour. So I think that's it for tonight. They're closing the lanes. Uh, I'm gonna watch some of the video footage here. We'll pull the GoPros, uh, see how that looks. By this point, you guys have probably already seen the GoPro footage. I think I'm gonna move up to a larger nitrous jet and probably make an eighth mile pass in the morning and see if we can get the improve the front half time. And, uh, Terrace Bay is like our local track. This year it's open twice for the whole year. So when we are out here, you know, we only get a handful of passes in a season, we gotta make them all count. So that's why I try and collect as much data as possible. That includes, you know, filming the car, getting different angles in the car. If you can get GoPros in the car, at least for me with the stick car, I tell a lot about what the clutch is doing based on what I'm hearing, how the, the motor is getting loaded up, how it's getting pulled down on gear changes, uh, high gear, there's a lot to learn on the, uh, on the clutch tune-up. So the guys are getting a little barbecue rig set up here. So, I think we're uh, ready for dinner shortly. Right, the, the snow right under yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Right under it and then try and weld back here. But then probably flip it and try and weld in there. This thing's open right here. It's got a tense line. Yeah. 
with the spine shop. So you guys also saw there that um, Brian went up to make another pass. He ended up breaking some parts on the Pro Charger. For sure I can say that it's not likely that Brian's just gonna pack it in. What the word on the street is we might wheel back to Thunder Bay tonight, throw that hub and, uh, and gear up on the lathe and weld it back together, square it up and I think bring it back and maybe try and run tomorrow. So we're gonna try and make it, make it work. All right, what do you got? What's the situation? <coughs> Broke the blower drive. This is supposed to be one piece. This is turned by the gears. This bolts to my blower. This turns the blower. Yeah. And the other side's turned by the engine. And she snapped off, so yeah. now I make no boost. What's the repair? What's the plan on the repair? We're gonna bevel it and stick it in a lathe so we can center it so it's not way out of whack. And we're gonna glue it together with some welding wire. All right, that's the plan. About to hit the road and do it. Yeah. So we ran into the next town here. We're in Scriber. So look at that, look, look at the end of that stop start right there. Mm -hmm. the big cracker and great across it. Mm -hmm. That might be geometry, because mm -hmm. see how the discoloration comes out? Yes. Well, that uh, sometimes pushes all the impurities out. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Break the snow off the crank. But then I was like, well, it's still running, so. The red is gone into the crack. It'll bleed through the white. Oh, it bleeds through the white. Yeah. So, see all those there little holes? Those are all called porosities. Porosity, yeah. Yeah. Familiar with that bad boy. <laughs> but your crack is not a crack, it's geometry. Really? 100%. So you're really good to go. So it's a pass. Except for the porosity at the end of the weld there. Awesome. Beauty. Yeah, you know you're good to go. is out getting some heat on the track and air temp is about 16 or 17 so just had drivers meeting and walked the track they were dragging it they sprayed it so feels pretty good i think we'll have a pretty pretty solid day in terms of condition following up on last night uh, brian was able to get his pro charger deal welded back together uh dan was nice enough to get that cut down on the lathe give us access to a shop get things sorted out there so that was awesome brian's got the thing back together this morning so he's gonna get ready to make a rip too
work pretty good. It definitely hazed the tire a little bit through the 60 foot. The shift light was on. The shift light was on early and kind of stayed on, so I know it was turning the tire a little bit. Um, I'll have to watch the video underneath, see what the chassis did. So may have to play a bit more with the progressive control on the first bit, but the car felt strong after that. So we'll see. We're gonna get a pull back now, pull all eight plugs see what we can learn about the timing and the fuel and uh, look at making a full quarter pass. Three, four, five, seven, seven, oh, seven. Man of the people. We had stepped up the jet size in the nitrous to a 99 jet in the plate. This is basically like 300 horsepower plus worth of nitrous. So what we found looking at the plugs is that we're starting to get a pretty wide spread in the fueling cylinder to cylinder. What I mean is um, the distribution of the fuel in the manifold is not quite as, uh, as even as we like. And some cylinders are seeing uh, more fuel than others. If I had a nitrous and fuel nozzle in each cylinder, this wouldn't be too bad. I'd be able to tune the jet size cylinder by cylinder to get it in place. but. Um, because I'm using a plate system and I just have one fuel entry and one nitrous entry, I can't really adjust the fueling cylinder to cylinder. Brian just went 707 at 192 heat of the day, so that was awesome. Um, that's with the repaired Pro Charger drive uh, that he put together last night. So um, safe to say that thing is working and uh, he's going to keep creeping up on the 699 pass. I think we're, we're both going to get these cars turned around now and head back up to the lanes. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to hear your pass. Man, that car sounds amazing <laughs> on the back. <laughs> How'd it feel? Felt good, man. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, back in the pits after pass number five. Although the pass felt really good in the car, um, it basically slowed down everywhere. So right now the focus is to get the front half of the track working better. We know that the power on the back half um, is there, so. Well, the car definitely hooked up better there. Um, it actually, I left it about 20% 2D cycle on the solenoids and it actually stuck the tire and lugged the motor down. So it felt strong after that. So we'll see what the slip looks like. You did though. I did. I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> I pedaled and then I was like, I'm gonna go up a board run. And yeah. then in my brain, I'm like, you got new plugs in there. Uh, we were gonna try to get up for one more pass. Last one, it actually stuck the tire. So I think it took too much power out of the hit. So we're gonna put a little bit more power back in. Getting bottle warmed up. And we're gonna run back up to the lanes and try and get one more in. Felt like it could have been a good one. It's hard to complain, the car is doing what you tell it. You just kinda gotta tell it to do the right things. And that's kinda how you play this game. Nine thirty three one forty eight point five. So new personal best to end the day. Yeah, based on what we found in the earlier runs, we kind of had a hunch and it ended up working out. So it's kind of a nice way to the end of the day. Uh, PB on the gray Nova. Brian got a PB on the green Nova. I think we're gonna sign off, chill out, and then maybe turn a couple wrenches later. So. Sunday morning, third day of racing, getting a bit of calamari here for breakfast. I think we're gonna make one more step up on the nitrous jet in the plate. 
It's about 16 degrees, nice and cool. Um, there's a possibility for some rain later this afternoon, so I think we're gonna try and get the car ready right away. Last day, Brian's getting ready too, so see how things go. back to see what happened there we'll see how the plugs look see if it like the timing i haven't seen the slip yet so i don't know what the mile an hour of the splits look like but uh we'll pull it back to the pits and i'll have a look and find out so here's Great. alfredo spin it around
looking at plugs from the last pass, so we added a little bit of timing back, but I think that the nitrous bottle pressure might have been a little bit lower, so it looks like we have a bit more fuel on them uh, comparatively. So I'm going to cut the threads off. We got a closer look at the bottom of the porcelain, but there is a bit more fuel on the ring here. Better heat on the strap, so I'm happy about that. See a little wisp of fuel at the bottom of the porcelain, stained gray. Perfect, happy with the fuel on that plug. I think it looks good. All right, we're gonna pulse the water of solenoid so that it doesn't load up the motor with water right away because I think that's what caused the motor to kick. We got Brad Godin first round on the bike, so it should be a good race. We'll go post the eighth mile. I'm good with it, anything you want. Though. First round, quick 16. Oh, I don't got know. Brett and his badass bike, so. pressure so let's see what's in the line out of nitrous ran out of nitrous well not much you can do about that it's fun racing Brett though definitely uh, definitely got me there that's probably about it can never really uh, complain made like 10 passes all of them on the nitrous all of them spraying more than 250 horsepower worth of nitrous you really can't complain. We always want a little bit more, right? And that's just kind of the nature of it. But, um, you know, anytime that you can park the car, drive it back onto the trailer home, and then I'll be driving it on the street next week. But uh, it doesn't get much better than that, so. Oh, it's hit the alcohol in that one here. Okay. <laughs> we have one last uh, chance at a qualifier, but we were just using that as test pass through. So I tried to turn it up enough to get it. Uh, so more fuel, more time in it. I let go of the transfer button, made it go 10 feet, smoked the tires. I got past the tree sideways and it just instantly went into like the worst tank slapper I've ever had. <laughs> I've always said like the big tires suck because the sidewalls are so big and they're so wide. Like when we small tire race, if it gets out of shape, you like lift or you can stab it or whatever mm -hmm. and like the car just like goes back straight like this was just i like, never had it this bad like i was just pretty sonnets here in the limit overall good weekend like lots yeah. of personal best the best part is every time i've been here with the blower car yeah i've burnt pistons and this car has just been pushed in before the weekend's been mm. over so we're finally getting a handle on the fueling and all this kind of stuff i guess like, that's a wrap drag fest 2022 drag fest 2022 Back to small tire. Alright. I think that's it. Start loaded. We're out of here. End of another good race weekend. See you guys at the next one. Okay. What's in the box there? Dog nuts. Yeah. <laughs>